I still remember how it all started. It was late 2019 and I was working with a startup as a software consultant. My colleague and I were joking around, talking about how we should start our own tech startup. We could make it a challenge. 100 days to create a tech startup from scratch. We'll call it 100 days of tech startup. At first I wasn't really serious. But the idea stuck around with me for the rest of that day. And it didn't take long before I decided to do it. So the mission was clear. I was gonna create and launch a SaaS product in 100 days. First up, I needed a brilliant idea. So I thought to myself, what's missing in software development? I was thinking back to my time in sales from before changing my career to software and immediately it hit me. Leaderboards. We loved these in sales. We had huge TV screens plastered all over the place displaying who was ranking highest on sales and revenue and it was highly motivating to all of us. That was it. This was clearly missing in development. We need a way to see who reviewed most PRs, who committed most changes, and for the managers, they could use it to report on the team's performance as a whole. This SaaS idea was brilliant. I just knew it from the start, and the competition was low, almost non-existing. Perfect. I slammed together a landing page, posted on social media, and yes, people signed up for the newsletter. This was exactly the validation I needed. I spent the next 90 days building the MVP of the product. Sigmatic was born. On day 99, the product was ready. I just needed to press the launch button. I sent out emails to everyone who signed up. I posted on Reddit, Indie Hackers, launched on Product Hunt, and on day 100, I was ready to see this product take off. Then I waited. I waited some more. No one from the newsletter signed up. I checked Reddit, two upvotes. Product Hunt, five upvotes. Indie Hackers, Nothing. It just drowned. After watching the screen for around 10 hours straight, it was pretty clear. No one was gonna upgrade to a pay plan. In fact, not even a single person signed up. Another 10 days had to go by before I finally realized it. This was one huge failure. Welcome to my little space here on YouTube and thank you so much for jumping into this video. I'm Simon Harburg and obviously there's more to this story. In fact, I am running a profitable SaaS product today and I use this YouTube channel to share my experience with doing business online. So since you're here, you're probably interested in starting your own SaaS product. Maybe you even have a story similar to mine. In this video, I'll teach you how to come up with a SaaS idea that actually has potential and how to spot warning signs that might deceptively make you think that you have a great idea while in reality, the idea is worthless. So let's try to flip this around. In order to come up with a great SaaS idea with potential, it's actually more about taking an idea and putting it through some aggressive stress testing to see if we can tear the idea down. If the idea passes these tests, there might actually be something to work with. So let me go through three tests you should put your SaaS idea through. If you already have a SaaS idea in mind, you can see if they pass the test throughout this video. In each of these tests, you need to keep three essential pillars in mind. Viability, can your SaaS idea make money? Feasibility, can your SaaS idea realistically be carried out? Desirability, does anyone actually want it? You need to be able to close this triangle. There's gonna be no business if either of these are missing. So here we go. Test number one, dog fooding. Are you able to consume your own product while you create it? The best products are made by creators who are solving their own problems. Imagine a SaaS that would make your life much easier. This also means that you should ask yourself, do I have enough experience to understand the problem I'm trying to solve at scale? I'm sure you've had problems staying organized and coming up with a new approach to creating to-do lists might solve a problem for you. But there should be room for growth and maturity. So what happens when you scale your to-do list app into a project management tool like Jira or ClickUp? Do you have experience as a project manager on large scale projects? Have you ever managed a team and delegated work? These questions are important and they apply to any idea you might have. If you've never tried dealing with recruiting in the hundreds, probably you don't want to build an HR solution. If you've never worked in a big organization, probably you don't want to build a team collaboration tool or an internal wiki. If you've never run an agency, hiring out consultants by the hour, maybe you don't want to create a time tracking tool. 
Not only does dog fooding ensure that you perfectly know the frustration of the user, but it also helps create trust in you as a founder. If you don't understand your problem very well, it will be hard to comprehend whether it's realistic to carry out a solution for it. It's also hard to verify if anyone really wants it if you're not on that list yourself. When I was building Sigmedic, I completely failed to realize that my triangle was broken. I did not have experience as a product owner or being in a role where observing and reporting my development team's performance was crucial. What I also failed to understand was that development teams aren't sales teams. It's a completely different culture. Developers simply don't get motivated by having a dashboard showing who closed the most PRs. Taking experience from one arena and moving it to another one simply just doesn't work. All right, let's move on to test number two. Is your problem worth solving? You need to make sure your problem is big and frequent enough that it's viable to build a SaaS around solving it. I want you to consider these four quadrants. Identify to which your problem belongs. You might have a big but infrequent problem. It's a huge pain when it happens, but it doesn't happen that often. This could be travel planning, generating complex yearly financial reports, filtering job candidates, and so on. It's a good place to be. Users are definitely willing to pay for solving big problems. So if your problem is in this quadrant, it'll pass the test. Similarly, you might be dealing with a small but frequent problem. It's not really a big deal, but it simply happens so often that it becomes a big deal. An example could be sharing files between devices or tracking expenses on the fly or visualizing data that would otherwise take time to do in a spreadsheet. Again, it's a good place to be. You can find users who are more than willing to pay for solving small but recurring problems. So also here, we'll let the idea pass the test. Now, you might be dealing with a small and infrequent problem. It's not really a big deal and it happens so rarely that it never becomes a big headache. So the problem is there. You can probably find users who will recognize it, but it's neither frequent nor big enough that you'll have them pay to solve it. This is a huge warning sign and we cannot let the idea pass the test if it's found in this quadrant. Finally, you might be dealing with a problem that is big and frequent. This could be collaborating on designs, managing projects, maintaining internal knowledge bases for big organizations and so on. This is the best place to be. So if your problem is in this quadrant, it'll pass the test with a huge A+. It's important to understand if your problem is big enough to build a viable business around the solution. Some problems are just not worth solving. If I had put a little more thought into this while I was building Sigmetic, I would have realized that reporting on a development team's performance is both small and infrequent. Tools like Jira already have excellent inbuilt support for reporting on project level. Hence, reporting on the team's performance would only be necessary in case of occasional hidden bottlenecks, which could even still be solved in a different way. And the idea of a leaderboard for development teams wasn't even solving a problem at all. Sigmetic would not have passed this test. Let's move on to test number three. Can you afford the price of your product? Maybe you're not able to charge enough to make your business survive. Finding the right pricing point for your product can be very, very tricky. And there's this mantra going around that claims that you should raise your prices almost no matter what. This is of course ridiculous. As such, there's nothing wrong with a cheap product. You can definitely build a great business around that. But you need to make sure you can afford the low price. Let's consider another four quadrants. This time, we're gonna look at the revenue you get from each user versus the expenses you can expect from each user. Your product might have a high price, so it generates a lot of revenue from each user, but in turn, each user is costly. Perhaps there's a high server cost associated with the usage, or maybe the product is complex, so extensive onboarding and customer support are needed. Your product could also have a high customer acquisition cost, which is common if you're advertising in a very competitive space. This is okay. High revenue makes room for high expenses. So if your product falls into this quadrant, it'll pass the test. In the same way, you might offer a low price product, but you have very little overhead cost associated with each user. So your product is very simple, intuitive to use and more or less bug free. Users can sign up and get started without any help and they come from word of mouth. So no need for expensive advertisement. This is perfectly fine. Low revenue per user, but also very low cost. This means you can scale the number of users without having to worry about a lot of extra expenses. If your product falls into this category, it passes the test. 
And in a case like this, most likely you don't want to raise your prices. Instead, you want to look into ways of attracting more users. If you have an idea that supports a high revenue per user, but is also super simple, intuitive and scalable at a low cost, you've hit a really, really good idea. Obviously, this is the ideal quadrant to find your SaaS idea in. However, it's unrealistic in most cases. There are very few products that find themselves here. And as you've probably figured, last quadrant is imposing a huge problem. If your product does not incentivize users to pay a high price, but at the same time is complex, needs extensive onboarding support, and exists in a very competitive space, I'm sorry, but your idea will not pass the test. The triangle is broken. Ironically, I actually didn't mess up with Sigmatic on this one. I was planning on charging $60 per month for this completely irrelevant product that no one needed. And it would have been very low cost, both in acquisition since there is no competition and I think quite intuitive to use. So it was placed very nicely in that ideal quadrant. But since it didn't pass any other test so far, it wouldn't even have gotten to this place. But I did actually screw this one up at the current SaaS that I'm running. When I launched FeedHive in public beta last year, it started out at a pricing point of $5 per month. A social media management tool which core features are entirely based on integrations with third-party platforms will never be fully smooth and bug-free. We're also using expensive AI as a service providers and we're acquiring users through advertisement in a very competitive space. So the price point of $5 per month would have never been possible. Fortunately, we did realize this and we adjusted our pricing accordingly. Today, we charge $19, $29 and $99 per month depending on the plan. With FeedHive, we solve a problem that is both big and frequent among our users. And because our team has extensive experience with social media, we are able to constantly dog food our own product and develop new features to stay competitive. And for that reason, our users are more than happy to pay a higher price. I'm super happy that I got the chance to build a failure. It was fun, very interesting, and I learned a tremendous lot from it. And in fact, the 100 Days of Tech Startup Challenge was about exactly that gaining knowledge and experience that would be useful for the day it really mattered. So I'll totally recommend doing this as well. If you want to create a SaaS, but you have no experience at all, start by creating your first one, but have absolutely no expectations that it will actually succeed. Cause that's totally not what I was doing with Sigmatic. I totally believed that this idea would take off and become super successful. And I know now that if I had put my idea through these tests, it would have been very clear that my idea was not viable at all. Neither was it feasible because I didn't even have a clear idea about who exactly I was building for. And most importantly, it was completely undesirable. No one wanted it, but I'm super happy I learned this because this made my second startup, FeedHive, succeed and become profitable. This is only part of the story though, because there were other things I completely missed when building Sigmatic, and that changed everything once I understood it. If your SaaS idea passed all tests, be sure to watch this video as well. Understanding these metrics will change everything for you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I will see you soon.